everyone, it's Hannah here from Virtually Fluent. Welcome to today's grammar video where we are going to learn about word formation in English. It can be a tricky topic, but it is very useful to understand how we use different words and why we need different forms of words in English. Word formation is all about focusing on each individual word in English, why it's used, how it's used, and how we can take a root word from English and alter it, change it, in order to create different forms, nouns, adjectives, verbs, so we can create grammatically correct sentences. There are nine different techniques that we are going to study in today's video. The first four are the most important, so let's get started with these. Now, the first thing is that we can add prefixes to root words. Prefixes are small groups of letters put together. They are then inserted at the beginning of a root word. For example, comfortable, uncomfortable, and they can create different meanings. They could potentially change the form of the word, or they could give us the opposite, the negation of the root word. In this case, comfortable and uncomfortable have opposite meanings. That unprefix has totally changed the meaning of the word. Let's take another example, friendly, unfriendly. Again, this is a negative prefix. Or do, undo. But it's not just the words un or un as prefixes. There are plenty of different combinations of letters to create prefixes. You can see a list here. If you would like a more extensive list or examples of root words which can be used with each of these prefixes, you can find that in our word formation course. I've left a link to that in the description below. So we're going to move on to suffixes now, which are very similar to prefixes because they are groups of letters pushed together, but these are put at the end of the root word instead. Let's take the example act, actor, that O-R create actually a noun in this case. Or here's another example from inform to information, that ation ending has also created a noun. But we could also add active instead, informative, and now we've changed this to an adjective. So you can see we have different suffixes to actually change the type of word that we're using. You can see a list here for the nouns and the adjectives, and here for the adverbs and verbs. Again, you can find an extensive list with multiple examples in our online course. Now, back formation is simply the reverse process of adding prefixes and suffixes. So we take potentially a longer word and we can find prefixes, suffixes, we cut those off the word and we return to our original root. Let's take the example teacher, which is my job. We eliminate that er suffix and we end up with the root word of teach. Now we're going to move on to conversion in English, which is actually the easiest technique I'm talking about, because here we do not change the word. We don't add letters, we don't take any letters away. The word remains exactly the same, but the function of the word is different. Let's take this example, I sent her a text. Here, the word text is used as a noun. We know that because of the position in the sentence and the fact we have an article, a, before it. But take a look at the second sentence, can you text her? Now it's being used as a verb instead. Again, we know this because we have both a modal verb, which requires an infinitive afterwards. We have a personal pronoun, you, and an object pronoun after. So here the word text is exactly the same. No spelling changes, no pronunciation changes, but the function of the word is different. Now let's have a look at compound words, and these can always be tricky. We are effectively bringing two individual words together to create an entirely new word. And compound words generally are nouns, adjectives, or verbs. Now this is always tricky because there's no specific rule for why we bring together a verb and a noun, for example, or two nouns. Uh, however, we simply need to learn some of these different forms or different ways we can bring the words together so we can create our compound nouns, adjectives, and verbs. 
Generally with compound nouns, the first part, regardless of what word function it has, that first part tends to explain the purpose of the noun and the second part tends to be the actual word itself. What is that noun? What is that person or thing? You can see some different ways we create compound adjectives here too. Again, we've got a full list of multiple examples on our website in our course, our word formation course. So those are the four most important techniques. Let's take a look at some of the more advanced techniques. And the English language is constantly changing, evolving, adapting, and for that reason we have these other techniques. The first one is blending. So blending two words together. So very similar to compound words, we take two words and we bring them together. However, they are different because we change some of the letters and we physically bring them together to create just one word, unlike our compounds. These are generally quite informal slang language and more and more of these are created every day. We do have an official term for these, the portmanteau words, um, but blended words is just fine. You may have heard of this example, brunch, which is a combination of breakfast and lunch. Next up, we're going to look at abbreviations, which are basically easy ways of saying something. We take a long word and we reduce it down to a small word. You can see the example here of centimeter, which is often written as CM. This simply makes our lives a lot easier. And again, we have more and more of these in text language. For example, you often see a lot of abbreviations. Be careful not to mix these up with acronyms, which are those big capital letters which represent full words and generally a combination of words together. Now we're going to move on to loan words, and these aren't originally English words, they are borrowed words from different languages. Again, with the internationalization of English, we're starting to see a lot more of these. We often have French words like cafe, German words like kindergarten, and Spanish words like patio, but we do have other languages and of course many other words from these languages in English too. Again, a full list can be found on our website. Now the final thing to note is that with the development of technology, the English language is also changing. Take a look at some of these. To tweet, cryptocurrency, photobomb, all of these are brand new words in the English language. So as you can see, word formation is an analysis of the types of words that we have in English and therefore where they are placed within an English sentence. If you enjoyed today's video or learned something new, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn those notifications on so you know exactly when we've dropped another video on English grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation. This is Hannah from Virtually Fluent, bringing English to life.